Good morning. Thanks for tuning in to Nargology Unscripted. This is Dave. Today's subject is going to be when the final curtain comes down on the narcissist. Guys, take a quick second. Like and subscribe and then comment down below if you agree with this take or you don't. Go ahead and grab your coffee or your tea. Good evening around the world. Thanks for sitting in to the Narcology Morning Show. Cheers, guys. Guys, I know a lot of us talk, a lot of us say it's a horrible fascination when they're gaining the, the knowledge of MPD and why they do the things that they do because you're realizing everything is predicated on fuel, fuel sources. They're always running from current fuel supplies. They're always propagating these smear campaigns, making them look bad because they want to look, appear to be good in front of their peeps, their camp. They don't want people to know that they have this problem of not being able to bond, whether they know they have MPD or not. Some know, some don't. Most of them don't. Most of them don't know, guys. They just know that they can't bond. They think that they can love. They're relating love to fuel. That's why I said on a couple of videos back, it just takes that one fight. And then they, they deem that, that's when I lost my love for you. This is how they live their life. They know they can't bond, but they don't care. They don't have remorse. They don't care about their discardees and propagating such lies because they lack remorse. And they want to see people falling on their faces for them. Two or three at a time would just be joyous because... That gives them all that relevancy, that they, they exist. Look at the power that I have putting them through such angst. And they keep repeating the same thing because they see these Mrs. B's, the codependents in the harem garage, is calling out for an encore. The low-hanging fruit. Just like at a concert. When they leave the stage, they're poking through the curtain, seeing if you're in the harem garage screaming for an encore because they know if they can hoover you with an encore because you're reaching out to them constantly saying, hi, I'm in pain. What did you, why did you do this to me? This is the Mrs. B's that don't know anything about what's happening to them. They have taken all the blame like the narcissist wanted them to. This is how they do things. They're, they're poking through that curtain to see if you're yelling encore, encore. Let's say you're a crooner, old blue eyes. And uh, he knows when to hoover. He's going to sing the way you look tonight. And you're going to kick the door open. And then he's going to sing luck be a lady tonight. Because he's just looking at you as a groupie. They don't see value in us. They never have. They only see us as vessels that provide them certain fuel like sex and cooking and chores. Mix that in with adulation and admiration and you're grade A fuel source. But they see you screaming out encore. So they're going to serenade you. You kick the door open for them. This is B. Have you get your hit off the narc pipe. You're feeling no pain. They give you their, their fake epiphany letters, speeches. You're my person. I just realized that. Just realized that. Woes me that person I was just with wasn't you. And little do you know, you're just transitional supply. They're on their way to the new supply. They're going to get the two-for-one deal. Transitional supplies they need for two-for-one deals and to feel a safety net if something doesn't go well with the new supply they have you. So they always want to keep in good standing, even though that they're future faking with the transitional supply. Transitional supplies are typically baby daddies, baby mamas. Every time you guys got in a fight, they run to the transitional supplies. A lot of times they'll pick a fight just so they can 
keep seasoning the transitional supply. They're, they're insatiable. They have groupies in every town and every garage. And so they're going to go ahead and future fake with the, you were demoted to transitional supply. You used to be grade A wifey. Now you're just transitional supply. You're going to hear old Frank, old blue eyes singing, I did it my way as he's leaving your back door. And that's why the lady is a tramp. They see you as easy. Mrs. B's as easy. Get out of the harem garage. It's an enigma. I know you're confused. It's a very confusing time. But they never, ever cared for us. They never saw us with value. It's kind of like the Truman Show with Jim Carrey. After a discard, you're going, what? What do you mean there's cameras? That's a camera? You're all actors. Guys, a lot of you get attached to the family members, and I hear this all the time. I was closer to the family, their family, than I was to the ex-narcissist. Well, a house that produces a narcissist, you're going to have codependents and other narcissists. A lot of them were mirroring you. They were love-bombing you. That's why it was such a good time. It was just mirroring and love bombing. I'm not saying they were all narcissists. There's a lot of good people in their families. But when it's too good to be true, when you felt like you were best friends with the whole family, but you know that your ex-narc is comes out of a place of not so good of childhood in this said family, dollars to donuts that half of them are narcissists mirroring you. So take solace in the fact that you are love bombed even by the family. And this is why the narcissists love to bring you around their family because they know they are going to have this take and this bonding and this and this special bonding is really better for their game. They know that the, the narcissists, the family members know that you're doomed. They have a really good idea that you're not going to last like the last hundred. That's why you hear lines like, it's not your fault. If you only knew. I was hearing, it's not your fault. This is the MO. None of this is your fault. And, the, and a lot of you heard the same thing. So when I heard about NPD researching I'm like yes yes you're here for a reason guys but give yourselves a break you need to forgive yourselves that's the first thing you need to do forgive yourselves and forgive the narcissist so you can move forward and heal because they are done that curtain has come down there are no more encores and these harem garages are being shut down if this channel has anything to do with it my purpose when I started was to shut down the harem garages and to heal, to help you guys heal the way I was helped. And it's just an amazing community to the SEAL team. And uh, even if you haven't joined the SEAL team, the community is amazing here. And if you want to join the SEAL team, hit the link underneath the video. But I wanted to say one more thing. Yeah, it feels like we're in the twilight zone. But understand that it wasn't your fault that you need to forgive yourself and the narcissist. That is crucial. The, nar the narcissist, they are not having a, a good life. They are constantly on the run. Can you imagine being a, a, a bank robber, being on the FBI's number one list, fugitive list? What kind of life that would be? The narcissists are always running from their past. What kind of life is that? You don't envy that past. No more shouting encore, encore. You don't want an encore from a narcissist. You don't want to call uh, 
you know, a player in or an encore. They're just going to take your heart again. This is what they're about. All right, guys, the new question of the day is, since we're on the subject of entertainment and encores, I want you guys to comment down below a song that relates a title of a song that relates to narcissism. This should be funny. You can make up a title or have an existing title. Compare, compare that with your ex narc. I used to do this when I was, when I first started narcology and it went over really, really well. We got a lot of laughs and you need to laugh along with crying. It'll keep you sane. You need that balance. It gives you levity. This will give you levity to move forward and know that everything is going to be okay, that we got your back. All right, guys, hang in there. We'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is already Wednesday, hump day. Be blessed, guys. We'll see you tomorrow.